but powering doors is not the only way that you can use redstone torch, uh, sorry, redstone dust. Um, you can use redstone dust and torches with uh, switches, pressure plates, all kinds of things to do several neat things. Uh, let's take doors out of the equation for now. I'm just going to leave them standing there. And let's go... Yeah, let me show you something that you can do. Uh, you can create a sort of alarm or alert system with uh, redstone as well. And it all just takes a little bit of creative thinking. Uh, I don't have any wooden pressure plates, so we're going to have to make some. There we go. Let's take one for now. And if you didn't see how I did that, I took wooden planks and I just lined them up along the three bottom ones. And uh, that created a wooden pressure plate. Let's take that back into our little experimentation room here. And what I'm going to do is... Okay, um, this isn't going to work at first, and I intend it not to work at first, just so I can show you guys uh, how it works and so you can get a good idea of how the redstone uh, interacts with torches and things like that. So I'm going to throw the torch down. And what I want to do is I want to create a torch that lights up whenever an enemy walks over it. So I'm going to drop the pressure plate right there. And this is how pressure plates work. You step on them, uh, and they activate for one second, and then they turn off. Watch. See? Okay, so let's attach some redstone to that. Alright, so we've got the redstone attached to the torch. And let's step on it. Nothing has happened. Now, why is that? Well, remember as I said, redstone torches will power any dust that they are connected to. So in order to make a torch that reacts to something, to stimulus from power from another source, uh, you have to raise the torch. We'll put it on top of a block. There we go. Now you see the redstone torch is attached to this block, and it's providing power to this block, but not to this redstone ore, uh, sorry, redstone dust, because the dust is not directly attached to the torch. So now this dust can only receive power from this source. The switch will provide... Oh, that cow is going to get annoying if I don't go kill it. Let's go take care of him. All right, I came out here to kill this cow. Oh my god, X, why are you wasting arrows on cows? Well, because I've got a good bit of them now, and arrows are more fun than swords, to be honest. Although swords do have a certain charm that I've always been in love with. Anyway, back to the torch. Uh, like I was saying, the redstone dust is no longer attached directly to the torch, so the only place where the redstone dust can receive power now is from this, this, uh, this pressure plate. So when we step on it, and we hold on to it. The um, the power is now going into that block. And remember, redstone torches are always on unless they're receiving power from another source. In this case, this uh, pressure plate is providing power through the redstone dust to that block, and so that torch is turned off. That doesn't really do us a whole lot of good, does it? That's kind of weird. Like, let's say an enemy stepped on this pressure plate. Uh, our torch would then turn off. That's kind of counterintuitive. You don't want an alarm that's always on unless something bad happens, in which case the alarm turns off. That's like having a fire alarm that is constantly ringing until the building catches fire and then it turns off. That's totally counterintuitive. That's not what you want. So how are we going to get a torch that turns off, uh, that is off most of the time, but turns on whenever there's something pressed on it? Well, we're going to have to, again, we're going to have to reverse the flow to a second torch. Uh, what we're going to do here We'll go ahead and just add another few steps here, and we'll add a torch here, and we'll connect them together with redstone dust. All right, now we'll step on this. Hmm. So we still got the one torch that's uh, that it itself is turning off, but this one is still on. Why is that? Well, if you've been paying attention carefully, you know that, again, this dust is directly connected to this torch, so it's constantly receiving power from this torch. So in order to break that, we break down the block. Now this looks more like it. Now this torch is receiving power from this torch because this torch is providing power to this block and because this block has power this torch is off. We've seen that at work. We saw that at work earlier with this torch. So now this is the torch we want to be paying attention to. If an enemy walks on the pressure plate, that torch turns on. So that would provide an adequate alarm system. Okay. Let's take another look at that previous example in a more practical situation. We'll see here we have a redstone torch that is turned off, but we don't have any redstone dust lying around. However, if an enemy were to walk on this switch, 
the torch turns on. And they can jump up and down and things like that. And, you know, the torch will let me know by blinking if there's an enemy here. And of course, once they leave it, the torch turns off. But we have no redstone dust lying around. This is what makes what this is what makes redstone dust uh, complicated <laughs> and rewarding. Because uh, in order to keep a nice-looking dwelling, you're not going to want to have. It's kind of just like having an office. You don't really want wires lying all over, like hanging from the walls and like all along the floors and things like that. You want to make things look neat, and that's the trick with redstone dust as well. There is redstone powering that torch when I step on this switch. And let me show you exactly how this is done. Just like with wiring in the real world, you have to... Make sure I've got plenty of picks for this. Just like with wiring in the real world, you have to make sure that you wire things under floors, through walls, things like that. This is using the exact same setup from the previous example. It's just wired differently. If we break this open here, we can see a trail of redstone dust underneath. You press this and you can see the redstone power up. And thus, the torch turns on. Let's go a little bit deeper. See, there's that first torch that I used to reverse the current. So that one's the one that is always on. That was the one that was over here, but was on the left that was always on. That's the one that's always on, but it's underground. Nobody's going to ever notice that. Of course, the switch still works. Um, so there's the torch. And the redstone wiring. Let me go ahead and throw a real torch down so that we, you have a better chance of seeing it. Uh, put another one. No, it's fine. Right like that. So there's the torch, and there's the redstone dust. And it leads up through the floor of this little ramp that I built here. And it connects to that block right there. And that block is the one that the redstone torch uh, outside is sitting on. So this one's constantly, constantly receiving power from this torch, meaning that torch up there is off, until this switch is pressed. And I have no way up. Yay! I hate destroying smooth stone. Uh, Alright. And the way the switch works, the way the switch is wired up is break this open and I'll show you. Um, and of course I'm going to need a way out. There we go. The way the switch itself works is there is uh, redstone dust directly underneath the block that the switch powers. And it, I can't leave it on long enough to show you, but if you press that switch from above, the power will transfer down to the redstone ore down here, one block uh, below. And switches work that way too. Pressure plates and switches uh, both work that way. So that's how you would wire up that particular alarm. So if anything passes, the alarm goes off. Alright, let's patch this hole back up. 